Hi there. In a previous video I evaluated this uh, Chinese noise source and it was just rubbish. It didn't work whatsoever and it was just a waste of money. And I was so disappointed because the noise source is an excellent addition to a spectrum analyzer. But luckily uh, I found something else on eBay the other day, uh, or should I say last month. Uh, and that is this one here. In my previous video I did draw out the schematic for this noise source and uh, theoretically it looks pretty good. Uh, there's a diode here, uh, reverse biased, that uh, functions as a noise source. And then there are a lot of transistors, or there are three transistors here uh, that amplifies the signal and then the noise comes out here. Uh, but this didn't, didn't work at all. It uh, oscillated and uh, the grounding was terrible. Uh, but as I said, now I found this one. And uh, if you look at the construction, basically we have a power supply. It's a switch mode power supply and I, I don't really know why they, they bothered with that. But uh, again, we have the noise source here. And we have amplifiers all the way along. But uh, instead of transistors, these are mimics and they are much easier to control. So I have great faith in this noise source here. And uh, also you can see the layout if you compare it to the previous one that had no grounding. This one has a uh, VS stitching all the way around and a proper ground plane. If you look at the back, it's just, it's just a ground plane. There's nothing uh, cutting it anyway. So I think the layout for this one is really, really excellent. So I think what we're going to do next is just hook it up to my spectrum analyzer and see how it performs. Okay, so I hooked up my spectrum analyzer and uh, we have the ground here and we have 20 dB per division so we have uh, 20 dB and uh, this is the noise source here and uh, as you can see it is uh, not exactly linear when you look at the big picture uh, because at around 2 GHz, slightly uh, below 2 GHz it drops off and then uh, it dies up here uh, but uh, if we look at the smaller range, let's say uh, we zoom in on around um, maybe 1 gigahertz. Uh, there, and uh, then we have a span of uh, maybe uh, 100 megahertz. You will see that over a span of 100 megahertz, it's actually uh, very linear. And uh, I think that's pretty good, because uh, for example here at 1 gigahertz, you wouldn't have a filter or you wouldn't have a, a oscillator or whatever with a frequency range of uh, 100 megahertz. Even when you try to receive something, you wouldn't use a 100 megahertz uh, band for just one channel. So, um, no problem at all. I think this is uh, very, very good because it is noise. And uh, if we average out, let's say we average 16 uh, traces. We get a very nice and clean uh, noise source. There's no issue whatsoever. And uh, basically, uh, if I just switch off the averaging again. There. If we uh, center around 100 megahertz, and um, let's say we have a span of 200 megahertz, then we basically have all the way from DC up to 200 megahertz. And, uh, the noise is a little bit higher, higher level uh, around DC but again uh, let's say you're a ham operator and you want to do something at around uh, let's say uh, 40 megahertz uh, so we set the center frequency to uh, 40 megahertz and uh, we have a span of maybe 100 kilohertz meaning we just look at the frequency slice uh, of 100, 100 kilohertz and it's really really uh, linear around this area and in particular if we switch Particularly if we switch on the averaging. Uh, so I think the conclusion is that uh, although it's not perfectly linear all the way from uh, DC to uh, 2 GHz, there is no practical implication. Because over the small frequency span that we're actually uh, using, it is uh, more or less linear. Uh, I have 10 dB per division here and I mean it's beautiful really. So unless you do something wild like spread spectrum or something, you may jump up and down a couple of dBs uh, over the frequency span that you're using. It's really not an issue. So yeah, finally I have a noise source that is uh, more than usable. Because during normal workings of a radio, we maybe have a frequency band of uh, 12 and a half kilohertz or 25 kilohertz or 70 kilohertz or something. And uh, as you can see on the screen here, over 100 kilohertz or even over uh, 500 
uh, kilohertz span it is uh, perfectly linear so yeah no problem whatsoever I am very happy with this one and I'm gonna build it into a little aluminium enclosure just to be sure that I don't knock it about and uh, ruin it uh, because it's just a bare PCB but yeah I think the guys who made this uh, did a really good job and for once I got something from China that is uh, really usable so yeah that's it uh, for me today thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you again soon